Welcome back. Our slow start to spring might have gardeners starting to develop the itch to get a jump on planting season. And if you don't have to wait for the ground to unfreeze to get those seedlings started indoors, Garden Guide Dale K is live this morning with some secrets to starting those garden staples, starting with tomatoes and pepper plants. Dale, you're giving them a little head start, a little boost. Exactly. We're in a beautiful, nice, warm greenhouse. You, you mentioned an itch before. I've been wondering what that itch was. I'm literally itching to get started on planting. And fortunately, now is the time you can start some of those warmer season crops like tomatoes and peppers that you mentioned. That's exactly what we're going to do this morning. I want to just show you behind here, literally thousands of baby plants just ready for spring. It's absolutely gorgeous in here. And what we want to do is kind of replicate this greenhouse in your greenhouse. So we've got to kind of accomplish that first. And it's quite amazing that the more extreme the temperatures are, the more sophisticated greenhouses are. If you were to go down to Florida or Louisiana, quite simple greenhouses, further north into Minnesota, then even further into Canada, the technology is really quite amazing. And the first thing to note is on this floor here, it's actually heated underneath there. The temperature is a very balmy 80 degrees. And that's really one of the, the first things that initiates germination. And you can see there's some peppers and even some patio tomatoes here that are all ready to go. So the first thing we want to do inside your home is replicate that warm floor. And we're going to do that with a little heating pad just like this. And this will raise temperature about 20 degrees above your home temperature. So to get to about 80 degrees, um, you know, mid 60s, somewhere in there where we keep our homes, that's exactly the tonic for a warm floor. The next one is light, of course. We're in a beautiful greenhouse. There's supplemental lighting up high, and of course, a lot of natural lights, like one great big skylight. So we can replicate that in our homes. Um, you can uh, purchase little simple um, lamps like this all the way up to more sophisticated grow lights, depending on really how much seeding you're doing, or even just next to a nice warm window is quite nice with a lot of sunlight. So you can do it that way as well. The next thing, of course, we need is a vessel and some potting soil. I'm using a seeding mix and it's quite fine. And that way it provides a nice little bed for all those beautiful little seeds to just to kind of hang out on and germinate. Sometimes if there's a lot of bark or it's a lot more coarse, seeds kind of tend to rock and roll in there a little bit and you get some uneven growth. So a CD mix is optimal. If you don't have a CD mix, just a good quality potting soil is really, really beneficial. The next thing, of course, you need is some sort of vessel. The choices are quite endless. I'm, I'm going to use a seeding flat like this because it's got a little plastic liner in there that's going to replicate the greenhouse. A couple other things that you really need is some plant stakes because you want to write the names on there because sometimes all these little baby seeds all look the same. So, and then of course you date it um, so you know where you're at. Uh, you, if for small seeds, you can use these little um, seed dispenser things. I like to just to do it the old fashioned way by hand. I put about two or three seeds per cell. Um, but if you're dealing with really fine seed, that can be beneficial. And maybe you just have some starter pots on hand because as these begin to grow, you might want to size them up. So the fun part then is, of course, going to your favorite local garden shop and choosing some seeds. And this is the best part. You can grow your own food. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot healthier that way. You get to pick out some really cool varieties. There's all, there's literally hundreds and hundreds of different types of peppers and tomatoes. You can go to a garden shop, you can buy them online. No matter how you find them, they're as cheap as chips. Look at that, almost like just about $2 for some seeds, that is just amazing. So if you're looking for an economical way to garden, seeding, once you've got some basic supplies set up, really economical to, to seed as well. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna actually sow a variety of different types of tomatoes because I like to use them. Oh, look at that. It's a little train of plants. It is so much like, it is so much like spring in here. It's totally amazing. Um, I like all different types of tomatoes. Some of them I like to slice. You, know, you don't want all that juice running everywhere. Some of them I, you know, make homemade bruschetta, um, all sorts of things. So I do uh, different varieties, but I'm gonna start with this heirloom variety. It's called Bunny. 
and I like this variety because it's relatively um, fast to mature. It's one of those earlier varieties. It's also a great slicer. I'm also going to do a whole different variety and I'm just going to pop. Oh, also on the back here is a bunch of information for days to harvest. And I'm going to let my tomatoes actually grow up quite, uh, quite tall. If they get leggy, that's fine because I can plant them deep. Gonna, but I'm going to actually plant mine at the end of May. But no matter what you're sowing, there's a lot of great information there. I don't have my cheaters on, so I'm not really, really not going to really look at it. But there's the tomato seeds themselves. Like I said, I'm going to put about two to three. Oh, 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 water. I'm going to pre-moisten. Well, there we go. I'm going to pre-moisten the soil. That's key. Almost forgot important step. And there you go. Look, about three seeds per cell. And that way, I'm going to actually, if they all don't kind of work out or they actually don't quite all make it, I'm just going to pick the strongest of the bunch out of these and then let those grow on. I'm just going to tap those down and just kind of cover them up like that. So from there, this tray goes on the seeding pad, just like so. And of course, I'm going to take this little uh, plastic tray here and put that over the top that's going to replicate the, the greenhouse. The other great thing that you want to keep or pay attention to is air circulation. Once these seeds germinate, lots of light, some air circulation so things don't get moldy and then don't have everything too close. Do that thinning so you're getting one good strong plant. You'll have a lot less disease problems that way. And then, of course, you can size them up and then they go out in the garden once all the frost is out of the ground, of course. And for me, that ends up being towards the end of May, the warmer the soil, the better they will grow. Back to you. A little taste of spring here in Ember Grove. We've got things, we're, we're already thinking. I mean, my husband's a big gardener too. I know we talk about this, Dale. He's, he's ready to get the basement running. I know. He's ready. Thank I'm surprised. You. I'm surprised I haven't been invited over. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, the hydroponics are working. We have to do a segment. I know, I know, but my basement's really, really a trash zone. So we're not doing that, but thank you. I'm, I'm appreciative of your passion. Just check this watch. Thank you, Dale. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>